Hi, and welcome to Hack an Instant. My name is Jim, and I'm here under this bridge in Banff National Park to demonstrate a Polaroid camera that I converted to 4x5. It all fits in this case, and it's one of the smallest large format cameras that I've ever seen or used. It uh, comes complete with film holders, light meters, everything fits in this case. Let's take a look at it. This particular camera is the Polaroid Model 250. This was one of the, my favorite cameras back in the day when you can get pack film, instant pack film that you'd be able to see the picture right away. Well, those days are pretty much gone. Uh, but this camera, I repurposed to use 4x5 film. And I did that with, by putting it back on the camera. It's a 3D printed back which moves the film plane back enough to give it a 4x5 area uh, field of view. Now, uh, I also had to move back the uh, shutter body by the same amount as the film plane is moved back so that the focus will be correct. First, let me show you what I have in my kit. First of all, I have my manual speed dongle which I use to get manual shutter speeds on this otherwise automatic Polaroid camera. What I did was I modified the circuitry inside the lens housing and basically just bypassed the electric eye and replaced it with a resistor array that I have inside this box. And the resistor array fits on top of where the flash usually sits and then plugs right in to the lens body. Of course, the next thing that I have here is a light meter and that's just for more accurate exposure so you don't have to depend on the automatic exposure every time. The other things that I have in here are of course film holders. These are custom sized film holders to fit into the back of the Polaroid. If I use standard film holders the back would be larger than the camera and it would interfere with the viewfinder and also wouldn't give me tripod capability. This is why I had to design film holders and these are just 3D printed and I just use a bristle board as a dark side and it seems to keep out the light. Now we'll see as I test these and bring them home to develop to see whether it really does keep out the light. But for now what we do is we basically just use this like a regular cam like a regular large format camera, uh, place the film holder in, and I do have a, my film holder retention strap, and I basically put it around the film holder to, re to press the film holder against the film plane. I make sure that I'm on the right side of the film holder. I just kind of keep it in my head. I should really keep notes on how to do this but uh, because sometimes I have made mistakes and double expose things. But I'm ready to shoot after I meter my scene. So I take my meter and I'm shooting 200, uh, Frankenstein 200 film. So I'm gonna take a reading under this bridge and you'll notice something peculiar about Polaroid is that they don't have standard apertures and you kind of have to uh, figure out what aperture you're on based on the ASA setting and also based on the scene selector. Now the scene selector used to be for like sunny days only or indoors with glass, but right now I'm just using them to get different f-stops on this camera. I'm going to be shooting this scene at f8.8 because it's a little bit dark down here and so I'm going to have to set my scene selector to just indoors uh, with the, or with the flash and I'm going to have to set my speed to ASA 75. Even so, the shutter speed is going to be quite low. It's going to be an eighth of a second so I'm going to have to set my shutter speed on the dongle to eighth of a second and I'm going to have to brace myself uh, because it's such a sh slow shutter speed. What I really need is a tripod but this is a point and shoot, right? So shouldn't it turn out? So the next step is to cock the shutter and I'm almost ready to go. Remember you have to pull the dark slide to, before you take the picture. And then I'm gonna run over to the middle of the bridge and take a picture center on. So I've made marks 
in the dark side to show where I need to stop. Otherwise, uh, if I pull this dark slide out, I won't be able to put it back in. Just the way that these film holders were designed. So now it's time to take the picture. I'll put my dark slide back in and I'm ready to flip the film holder to the other side to take my next picture. Don't ask me how many times I forgot to flip the film holder over when I was learning how to do large format. Now I'm ready for the next picture. Next picture I'm going to take uh, one of the mountain's reflection in the Bow River. Now this is quite a bit brighter so I know I'm going to have to change my aperture and my shutter speed. So I'm looking at probably the optimal um, exposure of 60th of a second at f 17.5. Now you might think 17.5, what is that? Well that's just the aperture that the Polaroid comes with. And there's not really much you can do about it because the aperture is not adjustable between apertures. So to do that on my little scale here, it shows that I just have to have ASA 75 on the sunny only selection. So I'm going to set that. Now one of the weird quirks about this camera is that when you do that you have to choose the shutter speed two stops faster than what's indicated on here. It's just the way that this dongle works and you just kind of have to remember that. But rather than fretting about it I just thought I'll work with it because it's this particular dongle was very inexpensive and manual exposure is way worth it if you can just remember the details. So I've got it set for f17.5 and I'm going to set this to 60th of a second except I'm going to bring it up two more shutter speeds so that it really is 60th of a second. I can test the shutter speed just by listening to it and that to me sounds like 60th of a second. So I think I'm good to go. I just have to focus. And then I pull the dark slide. And then cock the shutter. And then take the picture. And then put the dark slide back in. One thing I really like about this camera is that I used to use this like 20 years ago oh maybe more like 30 years ago to take instant photos and it made me very sad in 2016 when Fuji decided to discontinue film and I was kind of I kept my all my cameras all my Polaroid cameras because I have a fairly big collection um, but it just seemed like what am I what do I doing with all these cameras so I have to get to the point where I was willing to actually modify it. In other words, take the door off or move the lens back or do other things like that and maybe even permanently alter them. Because I don't think that film, uh, instant film is coming back. And that's to me very sad, but rather than being sad about it, I thought, how can I use these cameras again? Because they're great cameras to use, they're fun to use, and when somebody comes along and sees them, it often brings back memories for them too. And they are great cameras. They've stood the test of time. A lot of them still work really well. Um, the bellows is usually uh, intact. It doesn't have any leaks. That's normally the case with these cameras, which I'm very impressed with. And they were built fairly well. Now they're not high quality, super high quality cameras. They're riveted together and stuff. But these, these, mo these higher end models um, have metal bodies, have a tripod socket, have a very nice rangefinder, and so these are the ones that you kind of want to look for if you're going to modify the camera. There's many different versions of these cameras, but these higher end models have glass lenses, three element glass lenses, rather than two element plastic lenses, and that's what you kind of want to look for in the camera. All right, let's set off toward home and see if we can get some pictures developed. This is my bathroom turned dark room. Yeah. Got my film holder, and we're going to be developing some 4x5 film. 
But in order to do that, I'm going to have to put it in this drum. This is an old Cibachrome drum, uh, which used to develop Cibachrome paper, but it works fine for sheet film. I'll be able to load two pieces of sheet film in there, 4x5, and I'll stick it on this uh, motor base in order to develop it. I'm going to be using HC110 or L110 Legacy Pro and dilution H, 63 to 1. First of all, I have to turn the lights off and load the film. Now, lest you think that I loaded the film with the camera in the same room, I didn't. I actually had to remove the camera to, um, to load the film because there's little lights on those things. I also have to remove the darkroom timer because it emits a little bit of a green glow. Here's the film holders just to show you how they're designed. You can find these um, on my website under conversions, under 4x5. They're very simple um, with using just cardboard for dark slides. But they are light tight and they keep out the light. Alright, so I have the film all loaded in the Cibachrome drum and I'm going to mix up my L110, they call it, Legacy Pro. Same thing as HC110. The nice thing about these drums is you can pour it all in and it won't start developing until you tip it sideways. All right, let's see what we have. There's the one negative. And, and number two. All I just use Dectal for one minute. There it comes. I already did a test strip to try and get it close. Just a little closer look at the photos. This one was taken at one eighth of a second. And you'll notice a little bit of blur here and there. I really should have used a tripod. I also noticed that the negatives are coming out a little bit thin. I'm still experimenting with this Frankenstein 200 film and uh, trying to figure out the best development procedures and time. This negative came out quite thin. I think I just underexposed it, um, but I kind of like the way it turned out. I think one question we had at the beginning of our video was, does Polaroid cover 4x5 since it's only made for Polaroid size negative? And I think when you see the results, I think the answer is yes. With lift film, you saw vignetting in the corners. You see slight vignetting in these corners. Uh, but with regular film, I think it's a little bit more forgiving, a little less contrast. So that was our demo of seeing how a Polaroid pack camera can shoot 4x5. And I think it's quite capable. Um, I'm still experimenting with, with exposures and, and getting used to the manual exposure and everything. But I think with a little bit of um, more experiment and I think we can get some pretty good results with it and plus I'll just have to sometimes get out my tripod when the shutter speeds a little bit low but that's all I have for you today um, hopefully this will inspire you to dig out that old Polaroid and and go to my website and click on conversions and see what uh, see what's there um, you can get to the 4x5 conversion just by choosing the link there and the 3d files and everything are there um, there's also a link to how to do the manual exposure um, conversion, which requires a little bit of know-how in soldering and desoldering and stuff like that, but it's very doable and it's quite inexpensive. This uh, dongle cost about $10 to make. So there you have it, 4x5 on a Polaroid. Hopefully you enjoyed this, this um, episode and um, I look forward to making more about the different types of conversions that I've made on these Polaroid cameras.